What's up guys, Justin here from Tame Type 1. Today, let's talk a little bit about carb cravings and how to deal with them, how to overcome them, make sure you don't give in to the carb cravings. This is a big deal because the most important thing and probably one of the hardest things about truly taming type one is changing what you eat. Because if you eat the same way you always have, if you eat the breads, the potatoes, all the high carb foods that you're used to, you're not gonna do well. At least not as well as you could if you were to switch to a low carb diet, a very low carb diet of meats, veggies, and other very low carb foods like that. Less than 10 grams per meal, right? It's a tough thing to transition to when your entire life, you're used to eating pancakes for breakfast and having dessert but after dinner and all this other stuff, fries, chips, so on. And a lot of these foods are very delicious and can be very addicting, especially when you finally take them out, you might realize, wow, I'm really craving this carby food. What do I do? Let me give you a few tips. Um, starting with my own story, with my own journey, one of the first things I did when I finally said, okay, I have to give up these carbs. I gotta do it the Bernstein way. The first thing I did was I either ate or threw out every single hard carb food I had access to in my house. I threw away the rice, the ramen, the bread, everything. Now, of course I had a roommate, so he still had some high carb stuff, but of course we had boundaries there. And so I wasn't tempted to eat any of his food. Now what this did was it made it harder for me to eat a high carb meal. It made it harder for me to cheat because I'd have to go out of my way. I'd have to walk in my car, drive to Five Guys or cook out one of these places and get myself some high carb food. Whereas I had already ready to go, low carb food, meat and veggies, ready to home to cook and eat. So in a sense, it made it less convenient and also a bit more expensive to me to eat high carb. And having that boundary, having that barrier between me and the high carb food really helped a lot at first to stop me from cheating. Now, another thing that helped was, um, and this is actually a critical one, was a change in mindset, right? Because for the longest time starting out, at least for a half a year in, I cheated every now and then because I would consider low carb, I will consider high carb food a treat. And I would say, you know what? I've been a good boy. I've been having great blood sugars today. Let's treat myself to a little bit of Wendy's. It's a little bit of Skyline or something like this, right? Let's treat myself to a little bit of cake. The problem was that I saw it as a treat in the first place. My mind was still at the point of, just like most normal people, this food tastes good. This food doesn't taste good. I want this food that tastes good. Instead of the mindset of what is actually healthy and what is actually good for you as a diabetic, you need to switch that mindset. And instead of seeing this food, these high carb goodies as treats, as um, indulgences, you should see them as what they are, hindrances, punishments even, something that is going to cause consequences later on because you eat that high carb food and boom, your blood sugar is going to skyrocket. And this finally flipped in me when I was on my way to Wendy's thinking, I'm going to treat myself. Yeah. And I thought, wait a minute, is this really a treat? Is this really something I'm going to enjoy? Because yeah, I'm going to enjoy eating that food for about five minutes, but then for the rest of the night, I'm going to be dealing with the high blood sugars going to low and then high, and I'm going to be on the roller coaster. I'm going to have this little meal, but it's going to ruin the rest of my night. And if I would just skip it, then I would have less stress, I would have less worry, and I wouldn't be on that roller coaster for the rest of the day. That is when it finally clicked for me that these aren't treats at all. These cheats are no good, and they don't serve any purpose other than to get me off the wagon, get me and sort of erase a lot of the hard work I've been doing. So once I stopped seeing these hard carb foods as just delicious food and more as something that I need to avoid and really understand the why of it, not just how to do it, but the why of it, because I'm trying to have good blood sugar, that was critical for me to finally overcome the temptation to give him those carb cravings. Another tip to keep in mind is the only time I have carb cravings these days, and I've been at this for about five years, yes, they do still happen, but the one time they really do happen nowadays is when my blood sugar's low. Of course, your body is going to say, hey, give me carbs when your blood sugar's low because your body needs a little bit of carbs to get back up. It's only natural. 
here's the thing. You want to make sure that you don't um, give in to those carb cravings, which are legitimate. Your body needs some carbs. You won't want to do that with something that you might slip into. For example, you'll never see me treat a low with garlic bread from Olive Garden. With those breadsticks, no way. I used to love those as a kid, and if I were to have one now, even now, I'd probably inhale it because they're so dang good and they're so dang tempting. Instead, I'd rather correct with something like glucose tabs that's not going to, you know, have me overdo it, right? You want something that you're going to just consistently, kind of like dosing insulin for. You want something that you just consistently take so that way your blood sugar doesn't go from 60 to 150. It goes from 60 to 80. Stick to some sort of option, like glucose tabs or something like that, something you don't quite enjoy a lot, so that way you're able to just meticulously dose the right amount instead of falling off the wagon. Another big thing to keep in mind is something that Dr. Bernstein mentions in his book, Diabetes Solution. It is easier to go 100% than it is to go 99%. What does this mean? Well, for example, if you were addicted to cigarettes, if you're trying to quit smoking, would your doctor tell you, just smoke cigarettes in moderation? If you're trying to quit drinking, would your doctor say, okay, just drink in moderation? Obviously not, because in both these situations, there's an addiction. And if you feed that addiction, even in moderation, you're not going to ever truly get rid of it. And same thing with carbs. Carbs can be very addicting. You know, bread can be very addicting. It's very delicious and Reese's dopamine in your brain, just like any drug would. Not as much, but nonetheless, it is addicting. And instead of thinking about moderation, instead of thinking, I'll treat myself right now and then, it is far easier to just avoid the temptation in the first place. Go all the way. Cut it out completely. Do not even give it an inch. Because the minute you start eating those high-carb foods again, you know, just to have a little bit, just for that 1%, then the temptation creeps back in. Suddenly you remember, oh man, I really miss the potato chips. You don't want to go there because a lot of times diabetics will do that and they'll fall right off the wagon and two months, three months go by and they're high carb and their blood sugar's crazy and you have to start all over again. So avoid that. Do not go 99%, go 100%, go all the way, cut out the high carb foods for good, even at Christmas dinner, which I will be celebrating soon, I won't be having any high carb food unless my blood sugar is low because I know the temptation is always there, even five years in. So stick to the plan, go 100%. Now, a few other things I recommend, some smaller stuff. That was like the three biggest things. But some smaller stuff is, of course, make sure you're eating enough. If you're hungry soon after you eat and you're not low, you're probably not eating enough. And when you're hungry, you're going to be more tempted to eat high-carb food, whatever's near you. So make sure you're eating plenty of protein, you're getting plenty of nutrients in you, so that way, from one meal to the next, you're not going to be super hungry. I've got a plan to the point where I'm only really hungry right before I eat, or if I'm low. That's it. And because of that, I'm never tempted. I could eat a meal and then go out with some friends and there's food there, and I'm not tempted by it. Why? Because I'm already full. I don't need anything else. I don't feel hungry. I don't feel the need to eat anymore. You want to get to that point too. Another thing to keep in mind is, let's say you still have carb cravings because you're, you're, you're a bit of a snacker, right? You like snacks. Well, there are low-carb alternatives you can try that will satisfy those cravings. If you have a sweet tooth, get some like Rebel ice cream. Love the stuff, very good. Um, if you're into the, like, the salty stuff, get yourself some pork rinds, something like this. And there are the other low carb alternatives too. You can get keto pizza and even keto bread and stuff like this. I will say though, caution, don't lean too heavily on it. Don't go overboard with it because a lot of these low carb treats, especially the store-bought stuff, it's very heavily processed. It doesn't have a, all the best ingredients and you're not going to be eating healthy if you're eating a bunch of processed food, even if it's more low carb. It can be better for your blood sugar, but think about the ingredients for a little bit and think about what you're putting in your body, right? So, you know, save it for a treat or something like that, something that's going to satisfy the craving without making your blood sugar skyrocket, but don't rely too heavily on it. Don't use it as a crutch. You want to get to the point where you're almost always just craving normal, healthy, whole foods, meat and veggies. That's the point where you're good to. But if you're stuck on the low carb alternatives, you know, it's going to be harder to shake that off. So keep that in mind. Now, that's the last I'll say about it. Um, over the years, I've basically gone to the point where 
I almost never have cravings unless my blood sugar is low. And in that case, I always have glucose on hand to manage that and the cravings go away instantly. You'll find yourself that the longer you're on this, the less the cravings there will be because you'll just be more used to this kind of way of eating. So you might be struggling at first, but remember, it gets better, okay? So keep that in mind, Entertainment Type 1. I hope you like the lighting in here and hope you like the little tree in the background. We are trying to get in the Christmas spirit here in the Tame Type 1 household. Be sure if you like the video to share it around with your friends and other diabetics you know. Like the channel, like the video, and subscribe. And, you know, make sure to give me a follow on all my social media, Facebook, Telegram, and so on. Anyways, you all have a good day and keep taming that Type 1.